here's a problem that asks us to find the arc length parameter s for a given parametric curve. Now remember, the arc length parameter s is the integral from your starting time up until the current time of the speed, written in terms of a dummy variable, and d-dummy variable. So what's happening here is this, if this is the speed, that's the rate times time. Rate times time is distance. You're summing up all the little distances traveled from when you start to the current time. So in this particular example, the velocity is r prime of t. And um, that would be, let's see, the derivative of t is 1. The derivative of the natural log of the cosine would be the derivative of the inside over the inside, which is negative sine over cosine, so negative tan t. And then the derivative of 3 is 0. So the speed would be the magnitude of the velocity, oops, which would be the square root of 1 squared, which is 1, and minus tan t times minus tan t would be plus tangent squared t. Of course, there's a Pythagorean identity that says that 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. And in this particular range of times, um, then um, the secant is positive. So this would be the absolute value of the secant. But if secant's positive, the absolute value will just be the secant of t. So we have that s is equal to the integral of secant. Uh, we'll just write the speed in terms of this dummy variable tau d tau. Now we need a starting time. And if you notice, t can actually go to minus pi halves because this, func this is just not defined at minus pi halves or at pi halves for that matter. But we, So let's maybe start, instead of starting here since we can't actually get to that starting time, let's just start at some time in between. We'll just be reckoning things from some time in between. Maybe the most natural time would be t equals 0. So we'll just, we'll just say how far have we traveled since time t equals 0. So we can figure out if, if, if uh, we have a time here that's after time 0, it would be how far we traveled forward since time t equals 0. If we have a time that's before 0, how, how far have we traveled as we go backwards, backwards from 0 to that previous time? OK, anyway, we just need to choose a starting time. And 0 seemed like a natural starting time. So to do this integral, I'm going to find an antiderivative. And the antiderivative of the secant is the natural log of the secant plus the tangent. You probably remember that from Calc 1, but you can just check it by taking the derivative. The derivative of the secant is the secant tangent. The derivative of the tangent is the secant squared. You've got that all over the secant plus the tangent, because the derivative of the log is, a, is the derivative of the outside, or the derivative of the inside over the inside. You factor out a secant, and the secant, there's a secant t plus tangent t in the top and bottom that cancels, and you're just left with the secant. So there's the antiderivative. We need to evaluate it between 0 and t. Now let's see. At t, we'll get the natural log of the secant of t plus the tangent of t. And at 0, let's see, the tangent of 0 is 0. The secant of 0 is 1. So we'll have the natural log of 1 plus 0. That's the natural log of 1. And the natural log of 1 is 0. So now we have our arc length parameter. That's how far we've traveled since time 0, because that was our starting time that we chose, is given by this function, the natural log of the secant of t plus the tangent of t. OK, so <clears throat> we know that s is an increasing function. So the distance traveled should increase the longer as a function of time, right? The longer it's been, the further you will have gone. So we know that we can, we can solve this function for t. So we've calculated the arc length parameter. Our next task here is to, is to reparameterize our curve in terms of s instead of t. So if we rewrite this, let's see, we, could, we, could, we need to solve for t. So let's see, s is the exponent you put on e to get secant t plus tangent t. So s is the exponent you put on e to get secant t plus tangent t. Now at this point, I'd like to convince you of two things. First, that if you have s as a function of t, you can solve for t as a function of s. And secondly, that it may not be any fun. So in this case, we can use a, a little bit of work with trig identi identities to, um, to show that secant t plus tan t is actually the same thing as the tangent of t over 2 plus pi force. OK, that's the part that probably you wouldn't find any fun 
to get that identity. So just know that it's not any fun. Now we can solve for t over 2 by taking the arctan of both sides. So we take the arctangent of e to the s and we get t over 2 plus pi force. We can multiply through by 2 to get 2 times the arctangent of e to the s equals t plus pi halves. And then finally solve for t. t is 2 times the arctangent of e to the s minus pi halves. Now we won't need to do this too much and I don't care if you can't see why those two are the same. That won't come up too much in this class but remember I just wanted to show you that it can be done. Now once we have t as a function of s we could actually substitute it into our parameterization to get our position as a function of time. So let's see r is um, the x-coordinate is t and t we know is 2 times the arctangent of e to the s minus pi halves and then we have the natural log of the cosine of t which is 2 times the arctan of e to the s minus pi halves closes the cosine and closes the log and finally 3 so we can write our position in terms of how far we've traveled along the curve. So given what distance we've gone along the curve, we can find the x, y, and z component that, that specify what our position is in space. So this again is the arc length parameterization. Now it looks terrible, but we know that um, when if you were to find the speed here, that um, if you find dr, ds, that's right, <clears throat> dr, ds, that's going to be 1 because s is the arc length. So every time s increases by 1, the distance that you've traveled would have to be 1, and that means that the speed would have to be 1. So, so this is the arc length parameterization. We've rewritten r in terms of that, that arc length parameter. Again, the important thing is not necessarily that you always be able to find it, but that you understand that because s is an increasing function of t, it is invertible. So you can solve for t as a function of s, and therefore, in theory, you could always write your position in terms of how far you've gone along the curve.